Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now it's going to be part three on basically how to uh, start using oscilloscopes. We're using the Ditex Landscope again because of the price point and everything. You know, for the price, it's just unbelievable. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a relative compression test. Now, a relative compression test can tell you a hell of a lot about your engine. It's one of them tests you can very quickly do and you can keep an eye on your customer's engine. And if there starts being some weird readings, you can catch it before it gets really bad. Now, the downside to it is it's very difficult to explain to the customer that you're doing a compression test through a battery or something like that. They don't really understand and it can get awkward. Well, how do you know my engine's failing? And, you know, it can just get awkward. But aside from that, you can tell an awful lot. We're going to be doing a compression test through the voltage of the battery. We don't have any amp clamps or anything in our kit. If we did, what we could do, we could do it uh, through the battery lines and we could also scope one of the injectors and we can actually even see if our timing is correct. So even through this, if you have the right equipment, which I can't show in this video because like I said, I, I don't have it with the kit, you can actually see if the timing is more or less spot on. It's not 100%, but you can accurately see if you've got a problem with your timing. So in other words, if your injector's firing at the wrong time, you know, you, we can see this. So what do we need to do this? We, all we need is one channel. We have our lead and we have our AC coupling adapter. That's all we need. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it onto a battery. So let's show the setup and let's get to the scope. Again, what I'm showing is what you actually get with the basic kit. So that's what I'm showing in this video. I don't know why the leads always manage to wrap themselves around everything. So, we put our AC coupler on to our lines and then we put it onto channel A. Right, that's it. Then what we do is we get the one with our clamp on for the earth, put that on a battery, and I've just got a back probe pin and I'm just gonna shove it inside there. That's the one that's actually powering the scope because we've got two lines here to power the scope. Then we've got our LAN cable connected to our scope. Next thing we need to do is stop the car from starting. Now, this car obviously starts, so we need to stop it from starting. If your car doesn't start, well then you don't need to stop from starting. All I'm gonna do is disconnect the injectors. Just pull off the injectors, no point me showing you. Pull off the HT leads as well, and that's gonna stop this from starting. Then we're gonna put our foot fully on the throttle and we're going to crank it but before we do that let's get our scope set up budget and leg it logos look at that right let's open up our scope it's going to automatically know we have our scope connected and on our first video i showed you how to set everything up by downloading the software going into the demo mode and all that good stuff automatically it's come up connect you heard that beep so we know we can basically connect straight away now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our leads here and we're just going to leave it where it says test lead. It automatically knows that we've got the attenuator on there or, should, or the AC coupling on there so we don't have to change anything. But what we do have to change is our voltage. Our voltage is too high so I'm going to go down to say, well actually no, I'm going to leave it at 20 volts. And the reason I'm going to leave it at 20 volts is because you, be, you can be very easily conned by looking at a relative compression waveform if you get your voltage wrong. So I'm going to show that. And then we're going to change the time base to two seconds. Things you have to be very careful when you're doing a relative compression. The clue is in the title, relative compression. This is not going to measure your exact compression. It's going to be relative to the cylinder next to it. So as it's coming up on full um, pressure, the alternator struggles to overcome that. That's how we get the waveform. So if all your cylinders are dead, the humps are gonna match. Now, yes, granted, if all your cylinders are dead, you are gonna hear it in your engine. Yes, I know that. But what this does is, and what I'm gonna show you, is how to actually identify what cylinder is dead. And then you can take your diagnosis from there rather than guessing. And then you can do other stuff to know, you know, is your intake, um, valves bent, is your exhaust valves bent, is your rings or whatever, you can take your diagnosis from there. But at least this shows you or identifies which cylinder it is with the basic kit. There is other ways of doing it, but because we've just got the basic kit, that's what we're going to concentrate on. Also, what you have to be careful with a relative compression test, 
You might be down on all cylinders. It could be good enough to start, but you could still be low on all cylinders. So if you want to get an exact PSI reading, you're going to have to go in there and do it with a gauge or do it with some sort of pressure transducer. There's a, there's a few ways of doing it, but this just gives you a rough idea. And it is a rough idea, but because it's so quick and easy to do, that's why we do it. And like I said, there's a lot you can tell from this waveform, you know, timing and all that sort of stuff. But, so what we're going to do is we're going to start this car now and we're going to get uh, a waveform going and we're going to see, see, what, see what it tells us. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to press start. So we've got a time base on two seconds and we've got our voltage, our voltage on 20 volts, which is too high, but we can change that as we're looking at the waveform. Foot flat on the throttle. And there we go. Now, I had a quick look at that, and that is upside down that waveform. But not to worry, we can change that. So I'm just going to go stop, go back through the frames, and there we go, it is upside down. Uh, but we can invert it, so we're not worried about that. Just go back and invert it. There we go. Right, now, this is what I was telling you about with the voltage being set wrong. If you used to quickly look at that, you would say that's a very bad, une well, not uneven hump, but very low humps. And you can see the humps look very, very low. That's just because our voltage here is wrong. That's what we don't want. So what we need to do is we need to set our voltage right in the first place. I'm just showing you this, just so you don't fall into the trap of thinking, oh, and there's something really wrong there. Yes, granted you would hear it in your engine, but it's just a trap to be uh, careful of. So we're gonna change our voltage uh, to maybe two volts. We'll go five first. Now you can start seeing the peaks of the waveform. So we'll just, essentially kind of zoom in a bit more there. And like I said, it's what I like about this here, this top bar, we can zoom in to a specific part of the waveform. I just really like that. Yeah, it is a bit choppy, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. So let's just uh, go out of that. We don't need that. Now, here is our waveform. If we go to the next, I don't know if I left it cranking long enough for the next one, did I? No, no, I didn't. Anyway, let's just, Leave it in there for the minute. We'll go to two volts. Maybe, a, well, we'll leave it at five. Right, what does that tell us? Well, essentially at the minute, that's telling us, not a lot really, <laughs> but it is, but it isn't. It's telling us, if we, if we put an imaginary line up there, them humps are more or less the same height. So that means the compression in our cylinders is more or less even that doesn't mean it's good that just means you can see from that this line here that i've just put up there it's more or less even now that like i said that doesn't mean we've got good compression here but we've got even compression it's relative to the cylinder next to it but again we don't know which cylinder is which so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take out a spark plug so we're missing a hump then once we know that, we can then, with our firing order, we can decide which cylinder is which. We've got a four-cylinder engine here, so our firing order is one, three, four, two. If we had other equipment here, we could then scope, say, an injector, and then we could see exactly, once we know which injector we've scoped, we can then see it, but we don't have that luxury this time. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly pull out a spark plug. You can do the same thing. If you've got a dead cylinder, you can quickly pull out a spark plug. But again, relative compression test, especially for a diesel, is fantastic because a diesel isn't just as easy as taking out a spark plug. If you really wanna to get to know everything, yes, you do need amp clamps and stuff like that. But again, this is just an, like an introduction anyway. It's just for beginners anyway, so it's not, we don't really have to go into massive detail. So what I'm gonna do now is do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna take out a spark plug. We're gonna repeat the test and then we're gonna continue. Right, I've done that. Um, also, we inverted the 
the actual uh, waveform, but if you don't want to do that, you just change your probes around and that will do it the right way. It doesn't really matter, there's just a few different ways of doing it. So what we're going to do, we're going to start this again. We've taken out a spark plug. Obviously, the engine's going to sound completely different because what we've done. But again, you're going to see what I mean about the missing hump. Same thing again, foot on the throttle. And there we go. Let's just stop that and go back on the frames and boom. You can clearly see a completely different waveform. Now, as you can see, the waveform looks completely and utterly different. This is kind of the best case scenario. We know the other cylinders are good and we've got a completely dead one. Where this is useful, like I said, especially on a diesel, and especially if we scope, say, an injector, we don't have to take out a plug and we can see which one is dead. We will, we will be able to hear that there is a problem with the engine, but we won't know which cylinder to go for and essentially what the problem is. Is it a terminal problem where it has to be replaced or can it be repaired? You can take your diagnosis further from here, but at least you can say to your customer, okay, right, your cylinder number two is dead. Then you can do a, a, a leak test in your cylinders and see is it you know, your intake, your exhaust, or your rings, or whatever the case may be. At least you can tell them then very easily and very quickly without spending too much time, and you can tell the customer, okay, right, you're gonna need a new engine or you're gonna need to repair it or whatever the case may be. So what we've done is we've completely taken out a dead uh, a spark plug. So as we can see, we've got a missing hump. It's really, really clear to see on this waveform. If you had a one, and just imagine it was only half the, the compression inside, obviously the, the hump will be about half. So again, you can, you, that's how you can identify that you've got an issue with that cylinder. Now remember, our firing order is one, three, four, two. So we can work out this. I take in out number three cylinder a number three spark plug. So essentially we've got three, four, two, one, or one, three, four, two. One, three, four, two. One, three, four, two. One, three, four, two. And you can see that hump always falls in number three, like it should do. So very, very quickly, we've identified we have a problem with our engine. We can hear it with our own ears. We don't need any tools for that. But with this relative compression test, and just the simple basic kit we have, we can tell what cylinder it is. Granted, if you have to take out another spark plug or take out uh, a heater plug or something like that so you can see, then that's what you have to do. But at least then you'll be able to identify what the problem is and take your diagnosis a lot further. The downside to it is don't take this as 100% gospel because it isn't. We know this engine is good. We know these humps are good. But if we didn't, if an engine came to us that wasn't starting, we can't say that these three cylinders that are, here, that are good, we can't say that. We can just say we've definitely got a huge issue with one of our cylinders. That's when you take your diagnosis further. On most cases, with an older car, if you find there's two dead cylinders and it's an older car, what's the point of, ca of continuing? Because the chances are your customer is not going to put an engine in that car. It's too old. So you haven't spent a, a long time, the cost, you don't have to give the customer a huge bill and they're gonna come back to you in future. You give the customer a huge bill because you spent 10 hours trying to diagnose the problem and then you tell them they need an engine and they say, well, I'm not gonna do it, but you still want lots of money for the diagnosis. This is seconds, absolute seconds. Turn on your laptop, hook up your scope, put it on your battery. Boom, set, set everything right. We've got five volts here and we've got a two second time base. We had to invert it, we just pressed the button, boom, it's inverted. I mean, it is so, so simple. So that's the good advantages of a relative compression. But like I said, you can't take it as gospel, but it can certainly aid you in your diagnosis process. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit what's going on. Yes, we could go into a lot more detail on all this, but this is just a basic, I'm going to do loads of videos on just basic waveform analysis, essentially, you know, without going into too much detail. Depending on what you're doing, yes, we can work out the timing. Yes, we can scope injectors and uh, coil on plugs and stuff like that, but we don't have that with our kits. We're not going to do that. 
just going to show you what you can do with the kit you've got. And like I said, it's, it's a thing you can add to. You know, you can just keep adding to it. Every couple of months, you can buy a bit, buy a bit, and build up your collection, and then you can basically be doing lots of stuff. So that's it. That's how to understand a relative compression. That's how to do it with voltage through the battery. Very simple, very quick, and you can move on with different cars, and you, know, you can get more jobs in without spending hours upon hours trying to figure out what's going on. Boom, put your scope up jobs are good and next customer please the question i want everyone to ask in the or to answer down below if you didn't have a scope and you had a car with a misfire what would you do there's loads and loads of ways of doing it but this is certainly one of the quickest so that's it comments down below what you do if you didn't have a scope on a petrol or a diesel because they are different so look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.